Hey there everyone, my name is Eduardo Arroyo, but you can call me Ed, and today I am here at Alcatraz. So I lived in San Francisco for about seven months now. I lived three months here last year, last summer, and I've lived here four months so far, and I've always prided myself of uh, having visited all the major attractions here in San Francisco, but I have one that I have yet to visit. Alcatraz, I don't know if you can see the boat. So the reason that I haven't been to Alcatraz is basically because there's a lot of people coming here during the summer, so there's barely any uh, times available for you to go. So if you wanna go, you have to come at a specific time of the year where you can find time slot for it. Uh, right now I work here, so it's good, and uh, we were able to find a few spots for, for a couple friends that are coming with us. First thing that comes to my mind is that we're like the Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Like in my mind, all I hear is like dun, 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 something like that. And we're going to Treasure Island over there. Getting cold, Mike. Getting cold. Oh. It's cold, guys. It's cold as heck. The ship is about to dock completely. That's funny because that's my friend over there. You see this guy with a camera? He's like kneeling or whatever. That's that's my friend. <laughs> oh snap! Oh snap! Oh, Do you guys see that? A few moments later. So that's on purpose. But I felt this was gonna get like destroyed. Look at my hair, guys. A white United States. <laughs> John, John, we're here at Alcatraz Island. I woke up this morning and said, oh honey, let's go find a nice building, 13 story building, and we walk up the stairs. That's oh, the no. first thing I thought do this that. morning. Nah. <laughs> now, the park ranger or whatever he is, he finished giving us the information that we need for the tour today. He told us basically that we can go ahead and explore by ourselves, but then there's also like an hour uh, audio kind of tour, which we have to go inside, get uh, headphones, and then uh, we can go ahead and do that. And he said that that was the highlight of the trip. We'll see about that. But right now, uh, we're just waiting for our other two friends who will be coming here in half an hour. So uh, we're just waiting for them, and then we'll go ahead and do all the other things that we can here at the rock. So, so my friends just got here. We're about to head uh, around the island. I think we're gonna do the uh, audio tour later. But right now we just wanna go ahead and explore and see what we can find on our own before going to the audio uh, tour. And now we're all together. This is my friend Farid. He's from France. Emanuele from Italy. Hector from Spain. Hola, Mike from LA. And me from Mexico. China. We are exploring this place. And the first thing, the first thing we find is a cannon. And you can touch it too. Come on. Touch it. Oh! As you can see, it's like pointing right at the opening, so that if anyone tries to come through this door, they get blown away. So right here is the social, the officers club, which was used as a social club, like for parties and other events for the uh, guards and their families. Could you imagine that though? Like your family living at like a penitentiary, like a prison of like maximum security and you're just here with your family. Sometimes like in the weekend, you're having like a, a party, you're chilling out, you're, you're bowling, you're exercising and everything. Imagine that. Oh. Oh. So this place was like kind of like a club, you would say. They're like all the officers were like. Baby. Another thing that I can tell you guys is that Alcatraz 
Uh, before it became a prison, it was first property of the uh, United States Army. This is where they jailed any prisoners of war, any people that deserted the army or anything like that. This is where they kept them. Later on, uh, the US government, Department of Justice decided to take over to turn this into a prison of maximum security. And uh, this was over 80 years ago and they lasted for a lot of time until 1960 something I believe 1934 to 1960 something those were the years that uh, this prison was active Emanuele is a professional photographer using his phone he's concentrated look at his face what is this supposed to be Emanuele? Uh, the new part of the industry is in laundry oh where so the inmate ah, so this is also where they would come and work Let's check it out. One thing that I'm learning from reading these posters is that a lot of the different uh, escape attempts originated here in the laundry room and the workshops just because I feel like they, they had the guards had more confidence they trusted the employees in order to work at one of these places you had to be well behaved inmates who who try to escape took advantage of that so this is some of the routine that the inmates had to go through as you can see it's very structured imagine being in that kind of uh, structured environment like you your life doesn't belong to you anymore like these people who did whatever they wanted outside of of jail and then they come here and they have to follow that strict routine in this really like bad depressing environment I think it would turn people even worse by coming here We just got here to the very top. This is the main prison. This is where we're gonna have the audio program uh, given to us. And uh, we're gonna learn a lot about Alcatraz. What that said is that if you break the rules, you go to prison. If you break the jail rules, you go to Alcatraz. More often than not, Alcatraz is seen as like the prison that house like the worst of the worst criminals. But that really isn't the case. They did have a lot of really bad people here, but the thing that Alcatraz was made for is to house the prisoners that couldn't follow the rules in all the other prisons. So this is like the troublemakers and all that. They were broken down until they were forced to follow the rules. We are here, we're ready with our Beats, Beats Audio. I'm just kidding, the regular headphones. But uh, we're about to start. They gave us this little device. You just click the green button and then the tour starts. So I can be too loud, but what I'm learning right now is that a lot of the corridors were named after like famous streets and roads here in the US. The one that I'm currently on, it's called Broadway. This one is where like the most recent inmates would come through. So they would like get hustled by all the other inmates. They were kind of like welcome in to, to their new home, which will be Alcatraz. Something that I just learned is that prisoners chose what they, how they wanted to live. At least that's the perspective from all the guards and all the security personnel here. If you behave well, you were uh, given some benefits. If not, then you were punished. Uh, one of the benefits that they give prisoners of Alcatraz is the recreation area where I'm at right now and what you could do here is do exercise, play games and just be outside and be able to breathe the fresh air and hang out uh, for a bit. All the other prisoners that behave bad they would not get this opportunity they would instead be put in isolation. Like I said before this was considered a privilege that you were supposed to earn by behaving well and not getting into more trouble than you already were on. This would be, I think, like a highlight of their day or their week. Maybe they were hoping to get some time out, so they look forward to, to the time that they could spend time here at the recreation yard. I say 
it's a pretty big area, but considering the amount of people that live here, um, maybe they didn't have enough space. So it's something that makes you think and wonder how those people live at that period of time. I think it's about to be time for me to go inside and check out the rest of the tour. So right now, I'm at block D. So the cells were divided into different spaces, different blocks. Block A to block D, those were the names given to each of the different cell blocks. Uh, right now we are in block D. This block, how they explained it, was a cell or like a jail within the jail. So this is where all of the worst criminals would end up at. So if you misbehave, you would come here. This was some sort of solitary confinement and you would only get to go out uh, one day in the week, I think, or a day to shower. So that was your only time that you could get out of the jail. The only things available at the cells in D block for the prisoners was a bed where they could sleep, a sink where they could wash their hands, and a toilet where they could go about their business. Again, there was no privacy. It was just to make it uh, clear that they were no longer in charge of their own lives. What I'm going to do right now is go ahead and move to the end. Um, so those last few uh, cells, they were called the hole. So here, like I told you in block D, is, it was made for the worst people, right? Well, the last cells, so the hole, was made for those people who were the worst in D block. So you could imagine who was there. We can go ahead and go to one of these. These marked with green are part of what they call, or they used to call, the hole. We can go inside of one right now. So look at this. So there was no access to sunlight, nothing like that. So you can imagine that you're here all by yourself and the only thing that you have is your thoughts. Like I mentioned before at the yard, that was one of the biggest privileges given to inmates here. Another privilege that was given to people who were behaving well was that they had access to a library with a lot of books and they could also get a subscription to different magazines uh, that were allowed by the guards and by the security here at the prison. Uh, so nothing related to criminal activity or any sexual material was allowed. When Alcatraz started to function as a prison of maximum security, it was sold on the idea that uh, the inmates would not be able to escape ever. This, however, did not deter the inmates from trying to escape multiple times. In total, there were uh, 14 different escape attempts done by 36 people. People would sometimes do it together, uh, some would do it alone. One of the most infamous attempts to escape from this prison was the one dubbed the Battle of Alcatraz. The Battle of Alcatraz was basically a day when a bunch of inmates decided to escape. They got together, they organized in order to steal the keys from one of the guards and try to escape that way. They managed to accomplish that goal of getting the keys. Uh, they got some hostages, some of the security guards, and they managed to escape all the way to the uh, recreation area that we visited earlier. However, the guard that gave them the keys managed to pocket one of the keys that opened the uh, recreation area's door. So all the inmates that were trying to escape got to that point and then they realized that the key didn't open the door. They got so upset that they started to shoot people, they killed some of the hostages that they had, and it was a standoff for a few days. They even had to get the Marines to come help them uh, take care of this whole mess. That must have been the biggest troll in history. Like imagine you're the leader of like the thugs that are trying to escape, and then you get to that point and you're like, ah, snap, like he did me wrong. And then the, the guard who, who didn't give him the key, he was like, got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. As crazy and organized as that escape attempt sounds, that was actually not the craziest nor the most organized case that they had to deal here in Alcatraz. The most infamous escape attempt that they had to deal with was actually the one called Escape Alcatraz, which we'll go over in a little bit. Well, so these cells right here, this is what I wanted to see since the beginning. So how exactly did Escape Alcatraz come to be and how did it go? Well, let me tell you that 
Most of the previous attempts were basically uh, inmates using brute force or taking advantage of a specific situation like we said before, like uh, working at the shop or at the laundry room and just taking a chance. Uh, whenever uh, you saw a window open, you would take that and you would try to escape. Most of them failed, like I said before, but majority of the previous uh, escape attempts happened that way. This escape attempt though was different. It was different because the people who tried to escape had a plan and a very, very complex one. A plan that took them a lot of time to complete. What they did is they basically grabbed spoons and metals from the shops and they started carving a hole in the wall. Not only that, but they also improvised a mechanical tools such as a drill that they made using a motor from a vacuum cleaner that they found. So these people were smart and they knew how to cover their tracks too. In order to make sure that any of the officers were onto them, they decided to create dummy versions of themselves. They used papier mache in order to create like a mold of their heads and they also used hair from the barber shop in order to put it there so that it could look more like a real human being. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you that. So that is that one right there. And if you look over there, the very back you can see the hole or the recreation of the hole that they carved with the spoon and the electric drill that they created. That hole led to an ervent which itself led to a corridor that they used in order to escape to the to the rooftop and then uh, try to escape that way. Another thing that I forgot to mention um, is that they also created a raft made out of different old uh, raincoats. So they were a creative bunch. They, like I said before, they created the electric drill, then they created the raft, which would make it easier for them to navigate the ocean and get to shore faster and safer uh, than it would be swimming. Their efforts actually paid off as they were able to escape. They were not uh, captured by any of the officers. And as of today, we don't know the conclusion of this story. We don't know if they managed to escape and survive to shore or if they died in their uh, attempt. The FBI ran an investigation uh, in order to determine what happened. But in the end, they had to close it because they couldn't find any evidence that they survived, but they didn't either find evidence that they died. People from both sides come with evidence saying that they found the raft, others say that, that like the family members of the, those people who actually escaped received letters from them that proves that they're still alive or something like that. But in the end, there's no 100% uh, proof that they were uh, successful or that they weren't, which kind of makes it even better for me because you still really don't know what happened. What these people did turned them into legends. I mean, we're still talking about them till this day. I'm really enjoying this trip so far. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to find my friends and uh, see if we can explore the outside a little bit more. But coming inside was very, very interesting. So I strongly recommend that if you come here to San Francisco, you go ahead and come uh, to Alcatraz. Uh, all right, guys, from here I say goodbye. Thank you so much for, for coming along with me. And if you enjoy the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with a friend that you might think might like it. Always remember to be kind, have an open mind. We'll see you, we'll see you next time. time.